Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Vasco, I'm a full-time photographer and today we're gonna to be talking about masking. Now, being a full-time photographer, I spend a lot of time in Photoshop and one of the tools that I use more often than not or more so than any other tool is the masking tool. It allows you to non-destructively edit your photo and do all sorts of special effects and different things to the photo. So this tutorial is kind of gonna be uh, an introduction to masking for those of you who wanna learn about it or you're new to Photoshop. So I'm gonna talk about what a mask is, how to set it up, how it works in Photoshop, and then I'm gonna show you four basic techniques to refine your mask so that you can implement masks in your projects, whatever you happen to be doing. And uh, yeah, that's it. It's gonna be a, a fun little tutorial, so let's roll the intro. Okay, so what is a mask? I'm gonna make this uh, real quick because it's super simple. Uh, pho photography has some strange terms like dodging and burning. What's burning an image? What's dodging an image? What does that even mean? What's a mask? How does it all work? So uh, let me explain to you what a mask is. And the easiest way to explain it is with a piece of paper. And there you go, That this is what a mask in Photoshop is pretty much. All right, this is why it's called a mask. There's parts of your image you can see and then there's parts of your image that are masked out that you can't see. Pretty simple, right? And in Photoshop, masking is non-destructive so you can always bring back the parts that you cut out. So let's pop in Photoshop, I'll show you what that's all about. All right, so here we are and we have two images to play with. I'm gonna talk a little bit about masking first and then I'm gonna show you four techniques you can use to refine your mask. Uh, select color range, select subject, uh, using brush tools and using the lasso tool. But uh, first, yeah, let's talk about masking. All right, so here we have a photo of a man dressed in black with a skull, skull makeup on and a top hat leaning against the white wall and there's a white floor. And then here we have a textured peachy brown kind of wall, a little stucco, aged stucco. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the stucco in behind this person leaning against the wall. That's gonna be project one. All right, so here we go. What we're going to do first is align the skew of this image so that it makes sense when we cut out the, uh, the background. All right, so there we go. So we have, we have the background and we have our subject matter. Now, a lot of times when people want to do something like this and they're just starting out in Photoshop, they would hit E and go for the erase tool and you can erase the person from the background. But inevitably, no matter how close you get or how fine you want to get, you're going to catch bits of the white area of the wall behind the subject matter. And the thing is, when you're, when you're using an erase tool, it's a destructive form of editing. So what that means is when you delete the pixels with the eraser, they're gone for good, period. You can't get them back. That's the problem with using the erase tool. Now, on the other hand, when you mask, it's a non-destructive form of editing. So when you delete those pixels, you can bring them back. And that's what makes masking so amazing. All right, so let's undo this stuff and we'll set up the mask. So masks are pretty simple. All you have to do is click on this icon right here and it creates this. You got a white area here and that's your mask. And now a mask works like this. Anything that's black, is cut out, anything that's white is visible. Now you can think about it as light, right? So anything that's white has a lot of light on it, it's perfectly visible. Anything that's black has no light on it, it's dark, you can't see it. Now with masks too, there's also shades of gray involved as well. So the darker the tone of gray, the less transparent it is. So let me show you right now. We want the black brush, not the white brush. So black means it's invisible, you can't see it, right? So there we go, we just painted in black, we cut it out. Now, if we switch the brush to white, we can bring all that pack. We can bring all those pixels back. So that's really cool, right? Now let's pick uh, like a gray. There's a medium gray. So you can see it partially cuts out the image. Now, if we make that gray a little darker, it's gonna cut out the image a little more to the point where it becomes black. And when it's black, it's completely cut out. So that's basically what a mask is. You're, you're basically using different shades from white to black to create different levels of transparency, which you can bring back if you make a mistake. So that's basically what a mask is in a nutshell. Super simple, super easy. So now let's apply that technique 
and cut out this person from the background and replace that background with a textured fresco wall. All right, so the first tool I'm gonna to show you is called Select Subject. So what you wanna do is click on your background layer and just go to Select and hit Subject. And the AI in Photoshop will try and select what it thinks is the subject matter. And here you go, this is it. It's done a pretty good job, it's okay. It's kind of missed parts of the ear and stuff. It's kind of like when you use portrait mode on your iPhone and you, you blur the background and it just, it blurs part of your face too because it doesn't understand where the subject start and starts and ends. So that's what you're getting here, same kind of technology. So what we wanna do is we wanna select the subject matter, which we have, and we're gonna go here onto this wall texture, click on the mask, and we're gonna paint black in the selection. Boom, pretty easy, right? Now what we have to do is use the brush tool to clean things up, or we could use the lasso tool, which I'll teach you how to use as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click hit B for the brush, and then we're gonna make a nice small brush. And what I like to do in these situations, oops, make sure you're selected, you're selected uh, the mask layer, is I'll paint over the ear or over whatever it is I'm trying to cut out so I can see the background. And then what I'll do is I'll get in there and mask it back in. Oh, I see what's going on here. They're both black. Okay, so here we go. Now we're gonna paint white and so that's the thing if you X will switch colors here if you hit X if you pay attention over here X will switch black and white but if both your colors and the color palette are black then it doesn't really make much difference so the brush tool is nice because you can get it nice and close and just for reference my brush is uh zero percent hardness so it's pretty soft edged if you make a harder edged brush you'll get a nice clean line so depending on how hard you want the edge, let me show you right here. So let's do a, a stroke here. So you can see it's kind of fuzzy on either end. There's a nice feather there. But if we go to the brush here and we take the hardness to 100%, when I draw a line, you see a nice clean edge. Now, depending on what you're cutting out and how soft you want those edges, you can determine which, uh, what kind of feather or softness you want on your brush. Okay, now I saw a piece over here now we have this piece right here that wasn't cut out. And for this, we're gonna use the lasso tool. And you can hit L for the lasso tool. And it has a bunch of different types of lassos. I go for this poly polygonal lasso. And you can switch your feather to one pixel. And the, the greater the feather, the, the softer that line's gonna be. I don't typically like to keep it at zero because I find it gets too pixely and you can see all the little pixel lines. So. What we're gonna do here is we're going to select this area that we're gonna cut out, like so. All right, and then make sure the mask layer is selected and we're gonna take the brush in black and we're just gonna paint it out just like that. Super easy, super simple. And that's it, I think we're good. Okay, so now that we kind of know what a mask is, let me show you a really cool keyboard shortcut which will help you with your masks. I think this is a forward slash, might be a backslash. Uh, it's whatever the symbol is. <laughs> All right, so here we go. This reveals the mask. Anything in red is the part of the image that you've masked out. And that is super handy. Let's say you're using a fuzzy brush or whatever, and there's certain parts of your image you know, you've accidentally masked and you can't tell. Obviously here we're using a white background, so you can definitely see, but let's say your backgrounds are pretty similar in tone. You turn on your reveal mask and all of a sudden you've seen, oh my God, this parts here I screwed up, so you can fix that. It also helps when you're, when you're getting in close, you can kind of see where the mask starts and stops and how soft the edges are. So it's really handy to use this before you, uh, you save your image or export your image. Now obviously you have to color it and shade it and add you know, your different effects to make that to blend the two layers together to make it look believable because right now there's no shadow behind the, the person. So it kind of is like, eh. There's not much shadow behind them here on the white wall either. All right, so now let's look at those tools we were talking about in a little more detail with a little more difficult of a project here. Uh, we have a picture of a lime and we have a picture, it looks like a long exposure here of some rocks, kind of like a cave-ish kind of situation here. We've got the nice horizon framed by the rocks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this section of the photo here of the water and we're gonna put it inside the lime and uh, 
whether it looks good or not, who knows, but we're gonna learn how to use some tools and uh, that's what this is all about here. So let's start by placing this image over top of the lime. All right, let's get rid of this, open this up. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take this image and change the opacity. So there's an opacity slider here. You can change it to whatever we want. The fast way to do it is just hit V and 50 for 50%. 9 for 90%, 2 for 20%. So I usually keep it around 50. So let's see. Now we're hit Control and T for uh, Edit, Transform, and Scale. And we're just going to line this up. So let's undo that. Let's lock the aspect ratio here. Okay. So what we want to do is get this interesting shape created by the rocks in the ocean inside the lime. And uh, and you know what? Now let's unlock this and stretch this a little bit so we get down here to the bottom of the line. All right, all right, so there we go. So now we have our image where we want it. Hit V and zero for 100%. And now we have our image over top of the line where we want it. Now we've got to create the mask and that's simple. Click this button, create the mask and it creates the mask in white, right? Now we're gonna undo that. If you hold Alt and click on the mask, it creates the mask in black. So now it's transparent. And I prefer to make the mask transparent right off the bat and paint in what I want. So now if we grab a white brush everywhere we paint, we're gonna see this, this texture in the background or this, this picture in the background inside the line, okay? So let's, let's look at some things. Now, if we go to the background here, and we go to this tool again, select subject. The AI is not really gonna know what we're shooting. Oh, actually, you know what? Look at that. Look at that. The AI did a pretty good job. Look at that. It selected the lime. You can see the marching ants right around the lime and it selected a bit of that too. So, I mean, if we wanted to do this, we click here on the mask and there we go, but that's not what we wanna do. But it actually did a good job here selecting the lime, but what we're looking for is the inside of the lime. Now, another handy tool when working with masks is select color range, and it's just what it sounds like. It allows you to select certain color ranges, and then you can turn those color ranges into a black or white color on your mask and then cut them out of the image. So for example, let's work with this lime here. We're gonna duplicate the lime layer. We're gonna add a layer underneath. Uh, let's make it like a blue color here. So, so underneath we have our blue layer, on top we have our lime layer. We're gonna create a mask. Now it's important here to not be clicked on the mask when you select color range. It's important to be clicked on the lime. Otherwise you get a different effect. Um, so we're clicked on the lime on the actual image. We go to select, we go to color range, and here we go. So depending on what part of the image you click on, you're selecting different parts. So if we wanna select the cutting board, we can, we can even click here on the image and then we can increase the fuzziness to get more of the line, more of the cutting board, and then we can add more bits of the cutting board. And there we go. We got a pretty good uh, selection here. But in this case, let's change the background color to blue. So we click on this subway tile here in the background, and then you can hold shift to add more selections to your color range. So we hold shift and click on this gray part here. Now we got more. We can click on this gray mortar bit here and this mortar here in the tile. So now we're adding more bits and we can decrease the fuzziness and we can click down here and let's get this dark gray part up here in the corner. So now you can see we've pretty much selected the whole wall by holding shift and clicking on the parts of the image we want and we hit OK. So now we've selected it and we can go to the mask layer now and let's take uh, a paint bucket and we are going to paint it in black so there we go we have now separated the background or mask out the background and obviously you have to go in here and refine things but this is a quick way of doing it and then what you would do here is make sure you clicked on the mask layer change your brush to white and see how this lime kind of fades it's got like a fuzzy edge so we would have to go here and make sure that our hardness is pretty low let's go 15 uh, percent all right, so mm, that's too much, too much. Okay, let's go to 50%. 
Okay, that looks acceptable. So what I like to do is I will cut things out here so I can see the background. And then I will bring my brush in here and start brushing it. That looks like this is probably too much. Let's go to 30%. There we go. And of course, when you increase the size of the brush, it increases the size of the feather around it too. So, I mean, if you spend more time on it and get in there with all the, the brushes and get it nice and close and do the details and things, you can definitely make it work. And here again, let's try this with the lasso tool. So let's uh, bring this back here and then we'll use the lasso tool, which is L. So you can make your selection. We want to cut this line here and then we want to follow this curve along here. Once you have your selection, you can paint everything in with the black brush and there's your edge. And then what you can do is you can bring the brush back into play here and just bring it in and feather in that edge a little bit. Because obviously with the depth of field, the front of the lines in focus and it falls out of focus as it goes further back. So it's just a matter of uh, getting in there and playing with it and spending the time to really like blurt out. But uh, yeah, that's that. And so let's get into this. So I think we've touched on all the tools. We've touched on the lasso tool. And actually one thing I'll show you with the lasso tool is this. By default, your lasso tool will probably have a feather of probably zero. I always have it set to one because it just gives a little bit of a soft edge, but let's set it to zero. So we're gonna create a box here and make sure our brush is black, color is black. So there we go, there's a lasso tool with a feather of zero. So you can see it's got a pretty hard edge all around. And now we'll go to the lasso tool, we're gonna change this to one pixel and we're gonna draw another box here. Fill that in. And you can see the, the edge is just a little softer. So when you're editing photos and you're trying to blend things a little bit, the softer edge really helps. And now, to show you another example, let's uh, change it to 50, 50 pixel feather. And we're gonna draw another box, which won't look like a box at all when it's done. There we go. And there we go, there's a, there's a 50 pixel feather right there. So depending on what you're trying to do and how soft you want the edge, you can change the feather on the lasso tool and it gives you a lot of versatility. And this is again, the uh, polygonal lasso tool. The other one is the lasso tool, which allows you to freehand draw. So we just freehand drew that. And we can fill it in and same thing applies. With that tool, you can change the pixel count to whatever, the feather to whatever you want. So now we're on 30. And there we go. Okay, so now let's work on this lime edit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on this background layer here, uh, the nice beach scene, and we're gonna drop that below the lime on the layer list. And then we're gonna go to this picture of the lime. We're gonna click here to create our mask. And now we're gonna zoom in a little bit and we're going to figure out what kind of brush we want. Because what we have to do is, if we look around the outside here of the lime, we have to figure out how soft it is. Now this seems like it was shot with a pretty bad camera. It looks like it was front focused. You can see the focus plane here on the cutting board and the lime isn't really in focus. So uh, yeah, we'll see. These images were all downloaded from, um, I'm gonna put the link down here. I don't remember the name, Pixel, Pixel, Pixel something. They're free stock photos that you can use for this kind of stuff. So that's pretty cool if you wanna go check them out. I'll put links to all these images down below in the description so you can go uh, download them yourself and try this out if you want. Okay, so what we wanna do is figure out how soft or hard we want the uh, the brush edges. So let's start at 50% here. And we are going to click on the mask and we are gonna paint the edge. And it looks like it's a little bit too hard here. Okay, so undo that and that. And let's lower the, the hardness, let's say 20%. 20% looks 
a touch too soft, a touch too soft. So let's dial it in at, let's say 25. Okay, okay, 25 is, mm, you know what? I don't like it, I'm gonna go right for 30. 25 seems just a little too soft again. Okay, yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint in where we want the mask. And again, if we hit the backspace button, we can uh, reveal where our mask is so we can see it. Okay, and now we're gonna hit G for the uh, paint bucket. We're just gonna paint that in. And you can see when you're using a brush that has a soft edge, you get this line. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paint over this line. So now we have this ocean view inside the line. <laughs> And I wanted to see a little more rock, so we can click on the, um, the image in the background and hold Control T to transform it. And uh, there we go. There we go. And you know what? Because the lime is facing one perspective and the uh, background image was shot another perspective, we're gonna switch it around. We're gonna transform, flip horizontal. And oh yeah, oh yeah, that makes a little more sense. We can put a picture of a tasty beverage here, making an advertisement. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. It's pretty easy. Masks, masks are definitely not hard to use. It's just a matter of painting things in different shades from white to black to create different opacities. And like I said, it's not destructive. So if you want to go back, you can definitely bring your lime back or you can bring back a slice of the lime or whatever you want, you know? It, uh, it opens doors up for you. And uh, yeah, masks are fun. All right, and that concludes our tutorial on masking. Hopefully you found that information useful. If you're into Photoshop tutorials, Premiere Pro tutorials, photography tutorials, videography tutorials, that kind of thing, subscribe to the channel. I got a lot more of that kind of stuff coming up. My name is Vasco, I'm a full-time content creator. And uh, yeah, thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Peace out, I will see you guys in the next video.